Polite Inquiries, SCG, day five. Villa says, this is a win, right? Why does this feel like a win? For cricket? For life? For you, Villas, personally? For England? For all of us to share this beautiful moment uh, with uh, James Anderson, Stuart Broad, blocking out 12 balls to secure and draw nine down at the SCG, 3-0 down in the ashes that were um, lost ages ago, yeah. <laughs> Surviving the mighty Steve Smith's brutal leg spin right to the end. I mean, it, it's a ridiculous sport. Um, you know, I've been doing overnights for whatever it is, seven weeks now. Um, it's a dead rubber. England are <laughs> terrible all the time. And yet I still got into it, right? I still, I was still there going, anything could happen. And it was, it was fun, uh, even if it all means nothing, which I mean, maybe more about sport than just, you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Metaphors are plenty. Yeah. <laughs> it was tantric. I mean, uh, that's that's what Test cricket is. All that all that build up, uh, like days of it, and we're just waiting for uh, to, for someone to finish it off and and think what happened. But you know, Steve Steve Smith lobbing hand grenades into the rough while uh, Jimmy Anderson props as far forward as, as is possible. Love it. I mean, to finish that with like a half tracker that even Jimmy Anderson was laughing at uh, was just. <laughs> It, it was perfect. If, I mean, if that doesn't fully explain how we've all felt all the way through this Ashes, I don't know what does. Agamemnon says, history has shown that teams failed to chase 400 on the fifth day. Why are people still surprised England were batting for the trawl? You probably got this on comms, I'm assuming, uh, over and over again. But yeah, it, I mean, Graham Thorpe said last night in the press conference, just so everyone's aware, we're not going for this. I mean, that wasn't his exact words, but that was the vibes. <laughs> yes, I mean, um, it, it's not a case for uh, Poirot, is it? Uh, but yeah, people do get wound up that uh, teams aren't sort of having a crack. Uh, pe people, oh, you mentioned Com but kept mentioning kind of uh, Headingley and, and Stokes and stuff. Um, <laughs> forgetting that that's a sort of the um, one in a billion chance that, uh, you know, the random number generator occasionally throws up. Normally, yeah, chasing 400 uh, against that Australian attack uh, on a fifth day pitch wherever in the world, but one that was going up and down in uh, in Sydney. Not a hope, and, and clearly not a hope, you know, both theoretically and in practice, they were never getting anywhere near it. So, uh, a, a, yeah, a draw is as good as a win, I suppose, in, in that regard. Shunak says, does that enterprising 77 from Zach Crawley give him a few more tests as opener? I mean, it probably does. I think it is worth saying that I don't think anyone has any fear that Zach Crawley looks like a test player on a very flat pitch when the conditions are slightly in his favour. And I think that's kind of what happened here. Um, it's really, can he make consistent test runs? So it looked great. And he quite often looks great when he's batting in really good form, but he also averaged, I don't know, what was it, negative 17 last year, right? Uh, you know, there has to be some real realism there. Um, what he has to do is back it up in the very next match. And I, I think that's probably what we haven't seen enough from Zach Crawley. It's not that he can't do it, it's that he can't do it consistently yet. Yeah, I mean, he said that he was uh, confident of going out and scoring 100 here, so he's actually underperformed by his own uh, measure. But uh, yeah, I mean, I thought he looked very good, actually, uh, you know, and then that is, um, yeah, as you say, plenty of people are kind of sold on Zach Crawley. Uh, but it's about, yeah, uh, producing um, scores regularly, not 267 followed by uh, a complete trough. And, and, it, and then a, it took him 18 of... innings, didn't it? It was 18 or 19 innings to score as much as he did against Pakistan. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not even asking yeah. for huge amounts of consistency from him, but just something. Chuffin says, who's the better bowler, Smith, Coley, Root, or Williamson? That's obviously Coley. Next question. Roger Ditcher says, was trying to get Cam Green some batting form the reason for this draw? I don't think so. They batted on after Cam Green was out. I mean, originally we thought it was get Usman Khawaja another 100, and then they kept batting. And then we thought it must be about Cameron Green, and then they sent Alex Carey in. Uh, I honestly thought, think they just thought they needed more runs. They might have been wrong, but I think that's what they thought. It was about getting Jack Leach on a hat trick and then denying him it. That's what it was about. Um, yeah, I mean, Cummins said at the close, didn't he, that he thought they wanted sort of 400 or thereabouts. All captains kind of want 400 to defend in the fourth innings, don't they? Even if, as we've 
stressed England were never, ever getting them. Uh, Dilip says, Nathan Lyon has played over 100 tests and has over 400 wickets. For a bowler with that much experience, he really hasn't bowled Australia to many test wins, has he? He's one of the few spinners in the world that actually does as well in the first innings as he does in the fourth inning. That's obviously not a normal thing for a spinner to do. There's a couple of spinners in the world who have done that before, but it's, it's rare. And the reason is, is he prefers the extra bounce. And there's usually more bounce at the start of a test than there is at the end. Um, and this pitch didn't crumble either. Um, I, I thought he bowled okay, but Australia didn't even rely on him. That you know they went to all of their different bowlers. If anything, it was Scott Boland that they that they seemed to believe in more than anyone else. So I don't think Australia were thinking, oh, Nathan Lyon is going to win us this game. They thought it was always going to be probably a bunch of them chipping in. Yeah, and uh, when you've got Marnus and uh, and Smithy to to lob up the leggies, uh, you know what what's um, Lyon being a little bit uh, blunted. Uh, you know, to, to worry Pat. Vasu says, why did Jimmy Anderson not attempt a reverse sweep? I don't know. Absolute dogs act by Jimmy Anderson there. He had six whole balls. And also, it's his best shot. I don't understand why he would go away from it. He was lucky to, to survive. No sense of occasion. We'll see you at Bell Reef. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content plus live streaming, make sure to subscribe to ESPN Player.